We're here with Katie Salen, who opened a school last year. Can you tell us about, about that school? Sure. So the school is called Quest to Learn, and it's a new uh, middle school in New York City. It's a public school, and it was designed around what we call game-like learning. And so it was a school designed from the ground up around the way that games work. And we had uh, 79 sixth graders that entered last year. We just finished year one in June, end of June. And this year, uh, next week, in fact, we're enrolling a seventh grade. So we'll have sixth and seventh grade in the school. So an example of designing teaching and learning around the way games work. Right, so the curriculum is structured around what we call a mission and quest structure. So we really believe that what one thing that games do really, really well is they create what, what's called a need to know in kids. So in a game, you have to learn how to do something because you've been presented with a complex problem that you don't know how to solve. And so in the school, what a traditional unit um, might look like, we frame as a complex challenge for the kids that's 10 weeks long, that mission is then broken down into a series of smaller quests. Each quest has a really particular um, problem space that the kids get dropped into. They take on a particular kind of identity over the course of the mission. They may be a code breaker. They may be um, a neurobiologist that's trying to understand something about the diversity of life. They may be a magician. Um, and in working through the quest, they're learning particular skills related to state standards. Um, and every time they solve a quest, it unlocks a new problem that they then have to solve in the following quest. So you've been open a year. What, what have you learned in terms of, of what works and, and what doesn't work over, over the um, year? Yeah, so well, I think one thing that, we, um, that, that really came out last year is the power of collaboration in this model um, and how uh, challenging it is to get sixth graders to understand how to work together um, in a good way and how that collaboration really gave them the ability to think like a designer. So, I mean, we are game designers that have been designing this school, but it didn't occur to us that we were asking kids to step into identities as designers in moving through this curriculum, but in fact they are. Um, and, and gamers are really designers. They are trying to figure out what do I need to do in this particular space to solve this particular problem? And that's, that's really the way that designers think. So we um, have a special structure in the school called boss levels, which happen at the end of every trimester. It's a two week long period of time where the whole school comes together to work on a complex problem. Um, and so the first trimester, the kids were challenged to solve um, or invent a series of Rube Goldberg machines. So they were given a set of design materials, they had a set of design constraints, they had to use pulleys and levers and incline planes, um, and they worked in small groups of 10, and they struggled for five days in a row to build a machine that actually worked. And so uh, it was amazing because we understood that them failing every day was a really positive thing. Uh, the parents were not so convinced that their kids coming home saying, oh, you know, our machine is still broken, it's broken, it's broken. <laughs> Uh, it was a great thing. Um, and then by day six, day seven, those kids had developed these amazing machines. They learned how to work together as a team, how to really collaborate, and they were incredibly proud um, of these machines that they've made. Um, and so that was um, an unexpected layer of the work is around the kind of design thinking that has come out in the school. Any surprises over the, the year? <laughs> Uh, well, many surprises. Um, one of the biggest pieces that we underestimated was work with the parents around translating what was happening in the school to a model that was more familiar to them. So in the school, we our classes are called Strange Things. We have a class called Sports for the Mind, and a class called Code Worlds, and a class called The Way Things Work. Um, and those are classes that combine um, disciplines. So The Way Things Work is both a science and a math class. So when the kids come home, it makes perfect sense to them that their class is called The Way Things Work because they've been in class all week, but their parents have no idea what they're talking about. Um, and when kids are working on missions with, um, in a world called Creepy Town or with char characters called Troggles, again, the parents have no idea what the children are talking about. Um, and for the kids, they love that they have this secret language of the school. For the parents, they struggle to try to make sense of that in the context of what traditional school looks like. So one of our big surprises was, hey, we need to hold a lot of meetings with parents to explain to them what's going on and why it matters and how it maps to traditional ways of understanding school.
Wonderful. Good luck in, in year two. Thank you. Thank you.